Hello everyone, Kamats here. In this video I'm going to be running some tests on the new Raspberry Pi 4. This is part one of a video series of tests that I'm going to be doing. This first part is going to focus on the power utilization of the Raspberry Pi 4. Now just to give you a brief overview of the test conditions, it is currently 26.7 Celsius in here, which is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can see that I've left the Raspberry Pi 4, which is right here, this is the Raspberry Pi 3, running for about 20 minutes and 36 seconds, which is over on that display over there. Uh, up above is going to be the terminal I use for actually running the test. Now in the top left hand corner you can see the EEV Blog 121GW application running. And this is the multimeter that I'm using to do these power tests. As you can see I have the three wires connected up to the Raspberry Pi 4 which allows me to test volts and amps at the same time and this gives a volt amp rating which you can see over there which is equivalent to watts in this case. There are a lot of reviews on YouTube as well as reviews on various websites that go over a lot of the performance characteristics of the Raspberry Pi 4. This video is mostly focused on power utilization and testing out some beta firmware for the VT805 USB 3.0 host controller that's on this board. So let's get started with the tests. As you can see on the side, we're starting with a CPU temperature between 53 and 54 Celsius and a clock speed of 600 megahertz. If we start the tests, which consists of a stress test using the stress command and also a memory test using Sysbench, which I found to be the best combination uh, that I could find to stress out both components on the board. So we're going to go ahead and start this. And you can see the stress dispatching four CPU threads and Sysbench going in a continuous loop running uh, 3448 megabytes worth of memory through the test procedure. I'm going to let this run for a little while and I'll fast forward this in the edit, so hang on one second and we'll be right back as soon as we hit 80 Celsius. Alright, so as you can see we've hit 80 degrees Celsius, um, it hasn't thermal throttled yet, and based on previous tests that I've done, it seems to wait until the temperature is up around 82 Celsius before it thermal throttles, but then when it does, it drops all the way back to 1 GHz instead of 1.5 GHz. This is unlike the behavior of the Raspberry Pi 3 that would simply start scaling back the CPU to try to dance on that threshold of 80 Celsius. I'm not sure if that can be improved in future firmware versions, but one of the nice things about the Raspberry Pi 4 is that the firmware that runs the hardware and I'm not talking about the operating system here that's on the SD card, I'm talking about the firmware inside the chips, can be updated. And that is very different from the Raspberry Pi 3 where that wasn't possible. So that is a huge plus, and I haven't noticed any reviews talking about that yet. There we go, 4.6. Wow. It's not going to cooperate. What I'm going to do now is, is flash back to the previous firmware version, which is what shipped with the Raspberry Pi 4, and reboot. Alright, we're back and we're rebooted, and as you can see, the power utilization is a little bit higher than it was on the beta firmware. So... Let's just check the temperature in here. It's actually gone up a little bit to 27.4 Celsius. It's a little bit warmer in here and that's mainly because of the studio light. So let's rerun the tests. All right, so as you can see, we're getting up into the 80 to 81 range. So it's gonna start thermal throttling. Uh, which you can tell by the uh, power utilization dips. 
Um, and then as it gets hotter, it'll thermal throttle uh, for a longer period of time, which will cause a higher impact to the VA display. But you can see that the older firmware, which is what shipped with the Raspberry Pi 4, actually uses around 15% more power at max load with nothing plugged into the USB ports. So they're already making a pretty significant improvements in the firmware. So once this firmware is out of beta and they figure out all the little bugs and kinks, we're already going to get a, both a temperature and a power utilization reduction. So once this firmware goes through the development cycle and gets to a more stable state and they actually release it, I believe it'll be pushed out via the normal update process. So it'll be easy for the average person to update to it. But as you can see by my tests, it reduced the power utilization and the BTUs that this board generates. What that means is the board is actually generating less heat. So since the chips on the board are generating less total heat, then the board heats up to its thermal throttle temperature a lot slower. So you actually get more time at max performance before you actually start to thermal throttle. So that's all for part one of this video series of testing the new Raspberry Pi 4. If you like this video, please subscribe so you can see the upcoming videos about the Raspberry Pi 4 that I'm going to be doing. I also have a video plan to review the 121GW multimeter, which is what I used during this test and I'm going to use in future tests with not only the Raspberry Pi 4, but other platforms. I've already run some new tests on things like the uh, Audio Hat for the Odroid Go to see what the actual power utilization is of it. With uh, my new meter, it, it is much more accurate than my previous test setup, so I was able to get better power utilization numbers for the hat. And I'm also going to be doing new tests on single board computers and microcontrollers that I've tested in the past. So subscribe if you want to see all of that. If any of you have ideas on tests you'd like me to run on the Raspberry Pi 4, leave a note in the comments and I will definitely include them in this testing series of videos. So thank you for watching. That's all for now.